Hey guys, welcome to today's video, and today we're going to finally redo one of my older videos. One of the first videos on the channel, it was What If Yajirobe Trained. Where we begin, it's where Yajirobe and Goku meet. So, Goku and Yajirobe originally fight with Yajirobe surprisingly putting up a very good fight. Yes, Goku isn't at full strength at this point, but the power that Yajirobe displays is very surprising at this point in the story. This power that he shows, especially in the fight with Pimpiko's children, it shows that he is even stronger than Krillin, meaning that he is probably just a bit weaker than Master Roshi and Tien. So, there's not a massive gap between him and the strongest fighters that we've seen so far. So, as Yajirobe watches Goku, he is is incredibly surprised at the power, the drive, everything to do with this guy. Like everyone, he's inspired by the young Saiyan. So nothing really changes until he meets Goku's friends when they climb Corrin's tower. Yadrobi's done a little bit of training with Corrin, then when they arrive, he did briefly meet Tien when he took Goku back to Korin's tower after his fight with King Piccolo. So he recognises him and they talk and all of the Z fighters, they tell Yadrobe about Goku's training, everything about him. And this basically, it makes him go and travel to Master Roshi. That's right, over the next few years, Yadrobe will train with Master Roshi. So in this time he develops more skills. So he is very powerful yet Master Roshi's training because of the level that he's at already it isn't too intensive for him. It's the reason why Master Roshi didn't take Tien on as a permanent student. He just let him go with the others to train because he had already he had already surpassed his teachings. So Roshi trains with Yadrobe. After seeing the effects of King Piccolo, the fact that he killed him, the fact that there are greater threats that could still impact the world, he wants to get stronger so the two of them train together, eventually heading back up to Korin Tower to train with Korin again. So in the next few years, Yadrobe learns key control and both him and Master Roshi learn how to fly. So we get to the world tournament. Roshi does not compete. He figures it's time to leave it to the next generation, but he still wants to keep up with his training, similar to how he secretly did in Super. So Yadrobe enters as normal, but he still is eliminated in the preliminary rounds because he faced Kami. Although Yadrobe did get in a lot stronger, he is still no match for the Guardian of Earth. So the next impact that we see from Yadrobe is during the Saiyan saga. So they've all travelled Kami's lookout to train. Yadrobe is this time taking its seriously and training with all the others. Now we get to the arrival of Vegeta and Nappa. The Cybermen attack. Now Yadrobe has not stepped up to fight yet. Yamcha is fighting his after Tien has beaten the first Cyberman. So it jumps out to attack Yamcha but Yadrobe hasn't been there. He has been hiding because his personality has not change. Yes, he's more driven and he is more determined to get stronger, but he is still a bit of a coward. He sensed how strong the Saiyans were and he knew he was no match, but as he sees Yamcha about to get attacked, all the others were looking at Yamcha thinking that he'd already beaten the Cyberman, but Yadrobe hiding behind rock. He sees the Cyberman about to get up. He uses his sword and swipes a key blast. So the sword makes the key blast fire even quicker, so it swipes straight through the Cyberman just as it's about to attach itself to Yamcha. Yadrobe saved his life and then goes straight back to hiding. Everyone just looks around in confusion. It's as though no one knew what just happened. So now the other side men are dismantled with ease, as shown by Krillin and Piccolo being able to just pick them apart like nothing. All the Z fighters are at full strength to fight Nappa. So together they all fight. Gohan is still, he is no effect of the fight. He does literally nothing for a while. But all of the Z fighters fighting together, Nappa is overpowering them all. So something that I should say here is that Yajirobe, his power level is on par with Tien's if not a little bit higher. So at this point, Yajirobe is the strongest human because with his strength in Dragon Ball, without training with any of the masters that the others had seen and trained with before and his power level being so high it goes to reason that he could be the strongest human he has a lot of potential so it goes without saying that he could become the strongest one of them with training so all the others are getting dismantled this is when Yajirobe appears sneak attacks Nappa with a blast 
straight in the back. As he turns to face Yadrobe, who runs off again, Tien fires a tri beam and this knocks Nappa down, and Pico fires the finishing blow. So Nappa is defeated with all the Z fighters remaining intact. But Vegeta just laughs and says that Nappa just let his guard down. His stupidity finally cost him his life, which in a sense it did. Yadrobe saw an opening, took him off guard, and then Tien and Pico struck the finishing blows. Now Vegeta steps up, Yadrobe he is fleeing for his life, he can sense how strong Vegeta is compared to even Nappa and he stands no chance thinking that Vegeta is going to kill him or well, basically being responsible for Nappa dying. Vegeta just starts beating down every single one of the Z fighters. When Piccolo is beginning to get beaten, Gohan's rage is unlocked, he fires a full strength Masenko. Vegeta sees this at the last second and deflects it, charging the young Saiyan who is now getting getting pulmerized. No one can help him. Piccolo tries and Vegeta sends a blast, accidentally killing the Namekian. Vegeta turns and goes, well, didn't mean to do that, but shouldn't have been so weak Namekian. Gohan's rage climbs even higher and he actually lands quite a few powerful punches on Vegeta before his rage subsides. Vegeta smirks and says that he does have some strength within him. He's a true Saiyan and deserves to die like one. Gohan stumbles back in fear. Vegeta goes to punch Gohan when Chrome fires a destructor disc, just skinning Vegeta. Now this enrages the Saiyan Prince who fires a Gallic gun straight at Krillin. Krillin is dead. Yamcha now fires a Kamehameha wave straight at Vegeta who just stops it with one hand. He's no use. Vegeta laughs. Tien and Yamcha, Chaozu, they all just stumble back, they don't know what to do and as Vegeta raises his hand to blast all three, he fires it, it's deflected. Goku has arrived, just in time to save them three but not in time to save Krillin and Piccolo. Now Goku tells them all to leave, Yajirobe is still lurking in the background wanting to see what happens. So Goku and Vegeta fight, Vegeta has second minimal damage, the only ones that landed any shots on him was Gohan which not really any impact on, Go on Vegeta. So, two fight and their fight goes pretty much as normal. Now, Vegeta uses the artificial moon and is, well, again, it's going as normal. But this time, Gohan returns with Tien, Yamcha, and Chaosu, and they all try to save Goku. So, remember this time, Goku has Sensu beans. He gave one to Gohan and to Krillin, and he hasn't had to do that here. So, while this is happening, the others diverting Vegeta's attention. Gohan manages to go into Goku's pocket and get the Sensu Bean to give it to him. Goku gets the Zenkai and now Vegeta goes to crush Tien and Yamcha together. Yajirobe does what he did initially and cuts off the tail of a Saiyan Prince. Now Goku stands up and faces Vegeta. Vegeta is now a bit nervous. His trump card is now gone. Goku is now back at full power, even stronger in fact, and Vegeta knows this. So he tries to take him down quick. Goku outmatches him at every turn. The fight is easily won by Goku, leaving him in a distraught position. He is battered and bruised Vegeta. He needs to get away. This time Tien stands up to try and kill him like Krillin initially did. Goku's stopping him. Tien, he's a bit more reluctant than what Krillin was. He says he killed Krillin and Piccolo. Why would you let him go, Goku? He says, well, you and Piccolo are once evil. Look at you now. You're trying to save the world. Let him go. If he promises never to return and that's good enough for me. So Vegeta leaves. Now they need to come up with a way to bring back Krillin and Piccolo and the city that Nappa destroyed. That's right. I don't think that was ever wished back in canon. But let's follow. So this time it's Tien that remembers that Vegeta and Nappa mentioned something about Nami. Now they get in contact with Mr. Popo who gives them Kami's ship. Goku talks to Dr. Bree to install a gravity chamber like he initially did. So this is done, the repairs to the ship are done and a gravity room is installed. Gohan is not allowed to go this time as Chi Chi says there's enough of them going but he does actually sneak onto the ship. So Chi Chi would not let Gohan go because Goku's going, Tien, Yamcha, Chaozu and Jajirobe. She says there's enough of them there but Gohan sneaks on the ship because it's Piccolo and Krillin that have died. He needs to go revive them. So they all head out to Namek. So I should point out that the repairs of the ship 
take an extra couple of days due to the building of the gravity chamber so they arrive on Namek two days later because I'm not counting the delays from the filler as actual delays. So guys, what will happen on Namek now? More fighters, Goku there from the start and all of them in a gravity chamber. Will that have any impact? Let me know what you think guys. Did you enjoy this? Let me know if you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Cut, 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 time to end this. Gun, 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 gun.